Okay, so I'm about to lash the keel on, and before I did that, I wanted to go just show uh, what went wrong with my uh, ribs, um, because um, it seems like the whole thing's turned out pretty good so far, and if I'm messing it up on a regular basis and still doing that, then that's pretty good, you know, I guess, endorsement for the whole project. Um, and so what... Uh, so I did the ribs yesterday, and I ran out of time, so I couldn't do the keel and stringers on the same day. Um, and it just got really late and dark, so, um, uh, so I'm going to live with however it turns out differently than what it would have. Uh, Brian suggested that it might get a little more high volume, which is fine with me anyway. It went a little bit sized down for me. Um, but in any case, on the ribs... Um, when I was measuring the ribs, Brian's very clear about uh, measure at the widest point of each of the ribs, but on the bow, I did not. I started at the bow and me <laughs> measured at the one that was closest to me, uh, which of course, uh, well, at that point was this, the, 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 um, the forward edge of the mortise. And so my first ribs here are definitely shorter than they should be. Um, towards the middle, it's almost no difference. And that's where I noticed anyway, when I got just past the middle, I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to switch here. I said, I'm already switched. I messed up all those ones before now. But again, the ones in the middle, it doesn't matter because they're pretty much flat. Um, the ones at the end here, they're a little bit short. And so, so what that has done is made, I instead of redoing it because I had limited supply of ribs, um, I went ahead and said, well, they'll just be a little shorter and I can shim them up a little differently or have a little lower volume bow and it'll be a little bit different boat, you know, because I never paddled the boat, so I don't know what it's like anyway. Maybe I'll prefer it this way, but I think it's okay pretty much because what I did was I just put the keel at the right height as it's supposed to be. And then, um, made a larger shim here and of course then i had to put a couple more shims in than normally for an lpv um but anyway so the keel's the right height but there's just a longer distance between the rib and here so you know a little lower volume on the ribs here you can kind of see it goes down kind of sharply here um and that's because the ribs are shorter in the front here you know starting back here it doesn't there's really very little difference in between and I made a measurement difference. Um, I measured the difference from the uh, each side of the mortise, and it was exactly a quarter inch for me um, on the front end. So, you know, I figured a quarter inch. Uh, it's you know close to the margin error for my cutting anyway. So, um, but uh, so it's not a huge difference, but it is a difference, and I corrected it by doing that by raising the keel up a little bit and bigger shim. Um, when I was bending the ribs, um, I broke one straight out walking. I, I have a picture probably below this video that uh, shows uh, one of the rib, ribs, the middle ribs that I broke just walking there. Just, it was bad grain on it and snapped it. My two test ribs that, that I tested for the timing and everything were probably two of my best ones. Um, and they, they did perfectly. I did one of those knot things and it was super easy. Um, and, the, and then I did a really hard V uh, just to see how hard it was to bend it because I've never bent a piece of wood before. And um, that was, that uh, worked really, really well. Um, and then, um, and actually that's the one I reused. I broke this one here. You can see a picture of one. It's it's like half broke. It's, I don't know if it, was, if it was still passable or not, but I had like five or six extras at the end, and I still have one rib left that I didn't use that's kind of a, not a very good one. Um, and I had, when I broke this one, I knew that with the, these short ribs, I had the other half of the rib would be long enough to try again, so I ended up having... I had five or six pieces set aside that would be good enough for the first two, maybe three ribs to retry those as well as the, the few new ribs that I had. But this one is actually the, um, the rib that I practiced with. I kind of like could still straighten it out even like a half an hour later. I just 
forced it to straighten it out and then I stuck it back in the steam box and and re rebent it and it bent like perfectly I think it's not quite as sharp as the other one because I didn't focus and you know force it and my my belt uh, is horrible <laughs> um, I couldn't get the belt really to help at all I tried and it just was slowing me down and I couldn't do it so this one bent beautifully um, this one this one here uh, cracked a little bit on the top but just a little bit and this one did fine um, here's yeah see here's the one that's uh that was in the the first number one rib and as you can see it it, it broke up some but the other side's very good so um it might have still worked i don't know but i didn't need to use it here's another one that snapped on me i think um i don't know and anyway, i broke three or four ribs i broke one rib before i even started steam bending messing around with them the other day when i was just like hey these bend pretty nice they're out steaming i'm just gonna mess with it and then it snapped on me because a couple of them did nice and then anyway don't bend your ribs we are not doing it um okay other than that so once I had it all done, I had this one missing, this one missing, and number 11 missing. Um, so I, I redid those with my extra, um, and they came out all real nice that time. And then I replaced um, two other ones that had a little bit of splitting. Um, one over here somewhere, I can't remember exactly which one, I think it was 12, uh, had a little split on the side. And uh, so I went ahead and um uh remade that one um and yeah after it was already done it was probably acceptable anyway um but i just wanted i had extra so why not try so i read to that one made it very perfect um number 10 here um was a little bit shorter than all the rest like visually uh and so i don't know if you're supposed to um but the way i fixed that <laughs> was um, by putting, cutting off a little, a little bit of rib, um, and just sticking it just like a less than a quarter inch and sticking it down in, in one side, um, to raise up the bottom of the rib. It was almost right. And then I did it on the other side. And so just raising up each side, just that much, um, made it so that it fit perfectly. And hopefully it's far enough in the mortise so that everything's cool with it. Um, the back was all really nice and easily done. It was very easy on the stern. Um, I'm trying to think of where else, where else I messed up. I, basically, I replaced three after they were in because they had little cracks in them, that, and I had extra to fix it. I had um, a couple that that broke, and um, and that was out of the. I didn't mention this. This is um, Brian had some extra ribs off of a. Um, and order orders they did and so he did the email thing where hey whoever gets it first gets the you know cheap ribs and so i got the cheap ribs and he said there was a lot of flaws in them and but he'd make a boat with them and so i did you know i ended up it worked out so um i was a little nervous because i'd never done any of this before but anyway so it, it worked out so now i'm gonna lash the keel on uh do that now and um and yeah then we're going on from there there you go Thank you.